When I got the invitation to come back to Kent State, I of course was curious, why me? Why, why have I been invited to have this great honor? And I thought probably because the people at Kent State know about my close and personal relationship with Dr. Martin Luther King. And if you don't know about it, I'm gonna tell you about it right now. <laughs> now I know in a crowd this big, there's somebody who say, I was a student of Dr. King. Dr. King only taught one time, only taught one class, only eight people in the class. I'm one of the eight. So I'm one of eight people in the universe who can say I was a student of Dr. King's. Now I wish I could tell you I'd taken extensive notes in the class, and I had kept those notes until today, but I didn't do that. I wish I could tell you I'd had the sense to write down the pearls of wisdom that fell from the lips of this marvelous man, but I didn't do that. In fact, I'm not embarrassed to say that I remember nothing that passed between teacher and student in the class, but. From the young people I've met today, and this is a really a very small cross-section, so I don't have a good picture of Kent State students, uh, but of the young people I met, they're capable, they're interested in, in these kind of issues, they'd like to do something about them, they'd be, love to be involved in this. Uh, they seem to be bright young men and women to me, wonderful young people. I know they're doing the right thing. I hope they're doing the right thing. Almost every social indicator, from birth to death, reflects black-white disparities. Infant mortality rates are 134% higher for blacks. Chances of imprisonment are 570% higher. Rates of death from homicide are 493% higher. Lack of health insurance, 33% more likely. The proportion with a college degree, 53% lower. And the average white American will live almost four years longer than the average black American. These ills cannot be addressed by individual and organized charity alone, as helpful as these efforts are. Now I heard Professor Lonnie Guineer say that minorities are like the canaries that miners used to carry to warn them when the underground air was becoming too toxic to breathe. But too many people today want to put gas masks on the canaries instead of eliminating the poison in the air. I hope they come home saying, maybe I can do something too. Maybe I can join the NAACP. Maybe I can join this organization. Maybe I can do this sort of thing. Maybe I can register people to vote. Maybe I can do all the things that badly need to be done. There's a spot for me in this movement, and I need to find out what it is and how I can be a part of it. The truth is that Jim Crow may be dead, but racism is alive and well. That's a central fact of life for every non-white American, including the President of the United States. It eclipses income, position, education, race trumps them all. So we have work to do, none of it is, none of it is easy, but we've never wished our way to freedom. Instead, we've always worked our way. Thank you.